The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied to him with a story. A parable saying, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that same road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim poured oil and wine over his wounds and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction Take care of him. If you spend more than what I've given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Then Jesus asked, Which of these three, in your opinion, was a neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's invoke the Holy Spirit. Brian, close the door. Close the door, please. We have a visitor here. We have a bee. A bee. This one. So now we can be seated. It's uh,
Thank you so very much for coming to Mass this morning. We have a beautiful gospel reading today about what it means to be a neighbor. In church, we do not have friends. You can have friends everywhere else. In church, we have brothers and sisters. We are all brothers and sisters with one God that loves each and every one of us. The man who fell victim to robbers was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jerusalem in the Bible means heaven, happiness. Jericho is a depressed city. Jericho, whenever you hear that in the Bible, means depression. We all come from heaven and enter Jericho's in our life and then we are on our way back to heaven, to Jerusalem. What is this life? Have you ever asked yourself that question? What is this life? This life is an interruption of heaven. And so often in this life, we end up in Jericho. And the Samaritan comes along. Who is the Samaritan in this story? It's Jesus. He is the unlikely one who shows up in our life because Jesus shows up in the people in our life, the unlikely people. God shows up in those around us and he pours wine and oil on our wounds. Where are your wounds? They're inside of you. That is why when you come to Holy Mass, Jesus, the Samaritan, pours wine onto your wounds that you have inside of you. Hmm? He gives himself for our wounds. And oil to soothe our wounds. That's what we come to experience here in this church called Divine Mercy. Hmm? Jesus came to establish a covenant with all humanity. The Jesus of the Gospel is the Jesus that calls all people into unity. Father, may they be one as you and I are one. Just as the society of Jesus' day was divided in, by religions, you know, Samaritans were rejected. They were thought as the ungodly ones. They were lower than dogs, according to societal norms and rules of the day. Jews didn't want anything to do with Samaritans, and Samaritans didn't want anything to do with Jews. And so the unlikely one becomes the one who saves the person who is robbed, the Samaritan. Jesus came so that all people of all races and ages may be one, belonging to that same human community where each person experiences the belovedness of being a son and daughter of God. Brothers and sisters, of each other. That is the core of the new covenant established by Jesus, that we all belong to one another. And any division and exclusion is not in the spirit of the one who died on the cross for all people. All people. My God wants to include everyone. Hmm? People especially many times religious people, want to exclude everyone. 
except those who are like them. That is why so often God permits crises so that we may get it. When is it that this country, because a lot of people are like, you know, why? if, if God was a loving God, why would he permit a tragedy? An earthquake? You know, you, you know those questions that people ask. Why would God permit cancer in my life? Why would God permit me to be robbed by a robber? Why did this happen to me? Why did the cancer happen to me? When is it that you came together as a family? Ask yourself that question. When the stupidity of your clashes and, and divisions went away. When? You know, you were arguing about uh, who's better and who's not. You know, which uh, property will be uh, divided this way or that way. Or what your sister said to you when you were 15 or 16 or 17. Or the way she looked at you or the way she didn't or what she didn't do. And when is it that all of that went away? When your mother was dying in the hospital or when she actually died. That's when all of that went away. When the crisis hit your life. That's when you came together and everything got mended. Huh? I've never seen people come together like they do around the death of a loved one. This Friday, we had a couple come to the healing mass that we had. His wife has cancer. He's never, he hasn't been to church in 40 years. He works 14 hours a day, he says. He said it openly in the mass. Huh? He has a wife, but he never spent time with her until she got cancer. She had to go to church by herself. That's why I'm so proud of you. Because hmm? hmm? Andy is Jewish, but he, ever since they got married, he's always gone with Julie to Mass. Huh? Hmm? Hmm? I'm very proud of you. But this gentleman, it took cancer for him to get it, that he needs to start spending time and appreciating his wife. And he was even grabbing her by her rolls, uh, <laughs> which she said he's never done uh, in years. It took a crisis. Now, what's today? 9-11. We are such a divided country. I mean, I can't, I'm, uh, you know... That's why I'm so sick and tired of watching. I don't watch any of the garbage news and the pundits and everybody else that all they want is to try to divide you so they can control you. Uh, sick and tired of it. We're so divided. People hate each other like never before in this country. Republicans and Democrats. I'm conservative and I'm liberal. Uh, uh. Stupid, it's stupidity. You're an American. Uh. When is it that we came together last time? When those towers were hit. Uh. There were no Republicans and Democrats back then. After 9-11. And then hate came in when we decided a month later to invade Afghanistan. Huh? And, you know, it was love in the first 30 days. And then the, the hate, need for, for revenge came to people. And then we decided, and, you know, and all that went away. And it all went down. Huh? When hate takes over, when revenge takes over, huh? It's crises are good. When, when is it that this guy who got realized who his neighbor is? When he got robbed. And the likely people to help him, you know, the priests, the Levites, you know. No. But the Samaritan one, the unlikely one came to help him. Huh? See, things happen in our life because God is after changing us. Changing our mind. You know, for you to uh, get a little brainwashed by Jesus. 
that the, the, the people you, you least think are your neighbors will end up to be those who will help you. You know, when I started this church uh, a year ago, huh? some of the most likely people that I imagined that would help me turned their back on me. Hmm? The people who were, mm, Father Adam, you're so wonderful. We love you. We'll always be there for you. You know, you, oh, you know, we will help you no matter what. Oh, huh? where are they? And some of the most unlikely people are here to this very day. And I won't, I won't get into who they are, because you're in my book. You're all likely, okay? Hmm? But I'm telling you, some of the people who I thought would have helped me the most hmm, turned their back on me. But not any of you. You're here a year later, many of you. Hmm? Thank you so very much. I'm so grateful. You know, you, your presence here always strengthens my faith. And I know each of you goes through so much in your life. And I'm trying to give you always some good news that I know you can use for your own walk in this life because you're going through a lot and everything has a purpose is what I'm trying to tell you here, okay? Even a 9-11 had a purpose. Everything in our life. You see, I was born and raised as a Roman Catholic in a country where Catholics were clearly not Protestants. That's, that's supposed to be a joke, but you didn't laugh. Okay. <laughs> it was engraved in me that I was like, not like the rest, you know, that I was better. That Pharisee attitude of saying, thank you God that I am not like the rest of the people, sinners and tax collectors and prostitutes. I'm Catholic. Huh? Missing the point that Jesus said it was the tax collector that went home justified. The one that said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Not the one that says, thank you God that I'm Catholic. I'm not like the rest of the people out there, you know. Hmm? It's amazing for me to stand here and be able to say this to you because it has been such a painful journey to come to this. Hmm? And I have to tell you that a lot of this is a process. It's all a process because God is changing us. When I was in the seminary, I was sent to Oaxaca, Mexico. You all know that I've talked about it many times, haven't I? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've talked about me being there. And when I went there, I was in the seminary originally when I went and I had this attitude because I already had a bunch of college degrees and I spoke a lot of languages and I knew theology, I knew this, I knew that, I knew it all. Or so I thought, right? You know that attitude. And I, and I came from the United States of America and I went there to these indigenous people and I said, oh, I'm going to teach them. But it was they who taught me. I had this attitude, I'm going to teach them. Don't we so often have that same attitude? We think we know it all. You think you know it better than the Democrats because you're a Republican. I'm speaking. Huh? Or vice versa. You think you know it better than the Republicans? Because huh? you're a Democrat? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're coming upon election season here in this country. It's awful. Absolutely awful. Huh? They're all... All they want is to divide. It's diabolical. That's the, the, the word diablo or devil uh, is from the Latin, the divider, diabolus, the one who's, who divides. That's the work of the devil. God comes to unite. And I went there with this attitude, like so many of us have in our life, that you're better. Why is it that people have quit coming here? Because of a letter that some diocesan person or bishop wrote about me or this church? Is that why people have quit coming here? 
People care less about letters, okay? Mm. You know why? You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Because I know I can trust all of you to tell you things because none of you gossips, okay? So I can tell you. Huh? You know why? Because they, they, they say to me, Ooh, there's too many Mexicans in this church, Father. Huh? Oh, yeah? I don't want to go to a church like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, let's think about it. Okay, look at the other churches, okay? When they have masses in Spanish, there's very few people going there in English. That's why they don't start masses in Spanish. It's not because there's an priests who speak Spanish. You can go and get, get them, okay? That's so not an issue. It's because when you have mass in Spanish, then... The people in English don't want to go because we don't want to mix together. We don't like. No, we don't want that. Oh. We like division. We don't like unity. We love hate. We don't like love. If we liked love, we wouldn't be into all this hate on TV and all around us. I don't want to go to that church with those people. Mm -hmm. And I had that same attitude when I went to Mexico. Hmm? And I, I had to go three hours on a bus in, uh, in, in the mountains to this small town. And I traveled in the bus, you know, with uh, all sorts of animals. And I think there were chickens, there were goats, everything. And I think they all called each other. You know, there's a Polish buffet here. You know, <laughs> eat all the fleas. Uh, and I got to the town and I stayed with a family that had 16 kids. 16 kids, two adults, that's 18 people. And I got there and as is, now, as is customary, I brushed my teeth before I went to bed. And I left my toothbrush there um, outside on the sink and I went to bed and I get up in the morning and I see that one of the kids one of the 16 kids is using my toothbrush <laughs> and I said oh no I can share anything but not my toothbrush <laughs> and to that the boy saw that my expression changed that I became visibly angry and he picks up the one toothbrush that they had for all 16 kids and two adults and says, Here, don't worry. You can also use our toothbrush. <laughs> and what did I say? I Muchas gracias. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, it's the attitude, isn't it? Isn't that what Jesus wants to change in us? He came to change the way we see each other. To see each other as brothers and sisters, not as competitors. Religion wants to make you a competitor. Religion is not about compassion. Religion is about competition. Get it. It's all competition. That's what religion wants. It wants to make you a competitor to get money. Okay, Because once you can control people, you get money out of them. Huh? I've got the truth. You're wrong. No, we are all, all of us. You know, God is not Catholic. Oh my gosh, I just... Oh. Oh, I know I'm shocking of people here. I know that. God is not Catholic. God's not Jewish. Sorry. <laughs> God is love. And we would be so much better as people, as a church, as a nation, if we got it. Hmm? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God.